Episode number 165, Live Tournament. Welcome to the Heads Up Poker Podcast. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. These next few weeks, I'm going to have a strategy hand for you each time. Uh, it could be uh, online, could be live, could be cash. Um, all depends. This week, it's a hand from a live tournament. It's a $140 buy-in while I was in Las Vegas at the win. Um, blind levels are 150, 300. Now we came in the blind level before starting stacks are 10 K. Uh, I believe I just busted another tournament. So I went to this one or I just showed up late. Um, oh, I remember I had to help, uh, my aunt, uh, move something. So I showed up a little bit late, but anyhow, um, yeah, I late reg this one with uh, 50 big blinds. I don't like the late reg a tournament unless I'm getting at least 50 big blinds or more. Um, if you're getting less than that, I think you're really just handicapping yourself. I mean, for me personally, when I look over my results in, um, uh, hold a manager, um, you know, from, 100 to 150 big blinds uh i'm just completely uh, uh kicking ass you know i'm doing uh, 22 big blinds per 100 um 80 to 100 big blinds i'm not doing very well i'm only winning two uh, but basically the lower blind levels you go the the less uh less money you're gonna win um you know zero to ten big blinds i'm at three big blinds 11 to 15 i'm at three and a half 16 to 25 3.7 like that and generally speaking the more big blinds you have uh the more money you're going to win because you have um you can make more decisions uh but when you're short stacked like that you basically have one decision and that's to uh, push or fold um so anyhow you don't want to late reg too many tournaments because it can be detrimental to your bankroll um, but we came in with 50 big blinds. Now we're at the next level. We've got 33 big blinds, and we're going to be in the big blind for this hand with 33 bigs. Button. Button calls. So he calls 300. Small blind completes 300, and we're in the big blind. Story on the button and the, and the small blind. Uh, the button, I played about uh, two orbits, so maybe 20 hands, and I saw him limp several times get raised and then he folded to a pre-flop bet um, to a pre-flop uh, raise so with that in mind um, I think he's calling on the button there extremely wide and I think he's very weak most often I think he's raising nutted hands which I'd seen him do once and uh, I think this guy's pretty weak uh, small blind same thing he looked at his cards there was not much thought when he completed so I'm putting him on almost any two suited cards uh you know all small pairs uh no nutted hands i don't think the decision was too fast he limped too quick um i don't believe he's nutted here at all uh i looked down at ace of club seven hearts so we got uh, ace seven offsuit in the big blind with a wide button collar and a wide small blind collar now think about yourself in this spot with 33 big blinds we got a stack of 10k and right now, uh, we've got about, we have 900 in the pot. What do you do here? Do you check? Do you bet? Um, or do you raise? What, what do you do? I like a raise here. I think we're going to take down the pot quite often. Um, I think the button and the small blind are going to fold quite a bit. Um, who we'd really like to fold here would be the button because he's the only one that will have position on us after the hand. Uh, so I like a three bet here quite a bit. We have an ace blocker. Um, if this were something like ace deuce suited, I might be inclined to check here and just take a flop because ace deuce suited is a lot easier to play after the flop and it flops well uh, than ace seven off suit is. Ace seven off suit is a little bit of a, uh, it's dicier to play after the flop because you if you make a straight with it it has to be a four card straight there's no connection they're not suited so you, you don't have any real flush possibilities in there again you have to have four cards to make some kind of flush um yeah so i like a three bet here um three bet sizing into a pot of 900 uh how many bigs do we want to make it 
I think uh, no fewer than than um, uh, 1,200. I think in this game, we need to make it a little bit bigger um, just because they're kind of... Uh, the players are a little bit looser. I've noticed that they were inclined to call three X raises out of the blinds and less inclined to call like four or four and a half X uh, when people made it that. So not a big sample. I'd only been there for a couple of rotations, but that's a feeling I got at the table. Uh, I go pretty big here. This might be a little bit too big. I make it 1850. Um, the button quickly folds and the small blind, this is what was interesting. And this is the small blind. Um, he didn't look at his hand again, but he just instantly took out a few chips and called. There wasn't much thought to it. So that tells me several things as far as live hand reading here is that if this guy had pocket aces or pocket kings, for one and foremost, he's not calling that quick uh, in the blind with, with no thought. Um, so what hands would he call right there with that and then instantly call my raise when the button folds um, again without much thought I think there's a lot of hands there that are um, low pocket pairs so he's thinking to himself I'll flop a set uh, or I won't this will be easy to play I think he's gonna have a lot of suited hands in there like uh, Queen Jack suited would make a lot of sense Jack 10 suited 9 10 suited 10 9 or, I'm sorry uh, 8 9 suited hands like that hands that are not nutted flop easy um, uh, flop well you know something you know that you got something or you don't um, hands like that so he calls we go to a flop we've got uh, 4k in the pot um, and effective stacks are about 8k behind so our stacked pot ratio is about two to one um, and we get a flop so again we've got ace of clubs seven of hearts a seven off suit and the flop comes down seven of spades five of spades three clubs small blind checks okay so with seven a seven off suit we've got top pair top kicker here uh, the board is uh, real draw heavy six four would be the nuts um, is the small blind snap calling there that raise was six four suited uh, I don't think so um, although I suppose it is possible I don't have a whole lot of history on him um, but I think hands that would make sense in his range here that we could get action from, uh, you know, hands that are worse than ours, would be hands like uh, uh, four or five, uh, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, hands like um, anything with a flush draw now. I think hands that, that would uh, call that raise preflop would be things like, like I was talking before, ace, deuce suited, ace, three suited ace four suited ace five suited ace six suited ace seven suited maybe up until ace ten suited uh for him to call that fast uh that might be a stretch ace nine suited um so i think there's a lot of worse hands that we could get uh, value from here if we bet into a pot of 4k um sizing here on what size to bet i kind of like um I don't know, something around half pot, something like that. I don't know that we want to go much bigger here. I don't think we'd be stoked to get it all in um, on this hand, but with 33 bigs and when you flop this and if you decide to three bet out of the big blind, you might have to go with it. Um, in this spot, we bet 2,200. Um, kind, of kind of a little big. We're, we're committing ourselves here if, uh, if this guy shoves, uh, which he does. Uh, when he checked to us, he checked pretty quickly. We bet. Uh, we threw out our C bet, and then he instantly shoved. So, in spots like this, uh, it's going to be pretty close. Um, I couldn't do the math at the table because I didn't have um, a slice in front of me like, uh, like I do now. But um, I knew it was very close, and I figured my decision could go one way or the other if I could get him, uh, get him talking. So, I... Um, uh, that's what I did. I started talking with him, and he did uh, he did start to talk, qu uh, not quite a bit, but he started to mumble something, and then he uh, he said something to the effect. I asked him if he would if he would show me if I folded, and he uh, uh, he said no. <sighs> that might have erred on the side of a fold right there, and I probably should have listened to that, but. 
I, at the time, thought there's a lot of spade draws in his range right here that would make a lot of sense. Things like jack-10 of spades, 8-9 of spades, um, you know, 8-7, you know, worse sevens that he's shoving with, like uh, maybe 9-7 suited, uh, you know, 8-7 suited, stuff like that. Um, 8-6 is a draw that we, that we crush. I don't know. Against hands like King Queen of Spades specifically on a on seven of spades, five of spades, three of clubs, a seven versus King Queen of Spades. There, we're um, we're actually not a uh, we're not a favorite. <laughs> he's uh, he's a fifty three percent favorite, but we don't need to be that big of a favorite to um, to call this. The total pot at this point for us to call is uh, the total pot is fourteen three fifty. Effective stacks um, on the uh, on the flop there were were 8k, so I bet 22, leaving myself about about uh, 6k behind, and it means we're getting 2.2.4 to one, which means we need to be good here 41% of the time. After throwing in all those ranges, um, the uh, uh, set of threes would make a lot of sense. A set of fives would make a lot of sense. A set of sevens would make a lot of sense. Um, although there's only one combination of a set of sevens, and um, um, there's um, three of each of the uh, of the fives and threes. Um, I think it's cool. Um, I plugged all those ranges in with all the spade draws, all the uh, suited aces the anything that he conceivably could have snap called that uh, pre-flop raise with like queen 10 suited queen jack suited king jack suited stuff like that and we had about 45 percent so again it's real close i think i probably should have gone with my uh um with my live read when i got him talking it just seemed a little bit too comfortable a little bit too relaxed i really didn't know him but um yeah, this was close either way. Against that range, uh, we're 45%, so we just have a call with the 4% edge. But I think on the live reads, uh, I should have picked that one up. Don't forget to sign up for Tournament Poker Edge. You can go to headsuppoker.poker and click on the uh, link, or just go to tournamentpokeredge.com. Check out their free videos. You can find a link in the show notes here as well. When you sign up, use the code HUP month, HUP quarter, or HUP year. That will save you some cash. Give yourself a discount. Kick a little bit back to the podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in this week. And here is your weekly motivational speech. fail early, fail often, fail forward. Um, you know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. It don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken if it's your responsibility to fix it. For example, it's, it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic, but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're gonna deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. Fault and responsibility do not go together. It sucks, but they don't. When something is somebody's fault, we want them to suffer. We want them punished. We want them to, to pay. We want it to be their responsibility to fix it, but that's, that's not how it works, especially when it's your heart. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. As long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you are stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone.